You know, it's, I'll say something, it's a, it's a very sad time for me as a guy that works at the University of North Carolina that went to school here, that was assistant coach here, uh, that you know, cut me open, it's the color I bleed. Uh, we made some mistakes uh, for a long time and it's a very, very sad time for us that we're going through this. Our job is to try to do the best it can right now try to focus on the next day and, and do a better job. I'm very proud of the way that uh, uh, this university is going to bounce back. I'm very proud of the way that uh, the discussions that we've had that we're going to try to bounce back. Uh, when I came here, uh, it's hard to believe, 12 years ago. Uh, when I got here, it was uh, uh, in a little bit of turmoil. Emotionally, it was a very difficult time for me. I'd left a place that I'd loved. I'd uh, been at Kansas for 15 years and came here and I knew I had to win, uh, but also had to get the family back together again. And that's what we tried to do. Uh, we tried to care about the kids every day. Uh, told them, if you do as that what I tell you to do, we'll play in a tournament. We had some t-shirts made up, says play hard, play smart, play in March. Because no Bama team had ever played in March. Uh, we did. After that year, I uh, told them that we'd give them some help and we had a chance to win the whole blessed thing. Uh, we did. It was a proud, proud time for us. Uh, at the end of that year, uh, Coach Holliday and I talked because we had so many guys in the same major, and I'm corny as all get out, but some of you are old enough to remember uh, watching games, college get football games on TV and they had introduced the players, and the players would say, Roy Williams, I'll just use this, I hope I don't upset anybody in the drama department. The guy would say, Roy Williams, drama. The next guy would say, Steve Kirshner, drama. The next guy would say, Steve Robinson, drama. The next guy would say, Bubba Cunningham, drama. And I thought that must be the easiest thing I could possibly major in because everybody's in the same thing. At the end of my second year, I wanted Coach Holliday and I talked about, let's make sure that we don't push anybody in any direction. Let's make sure that we allow kids to choose their own major. I didn't like the fact that we had so many guys in the same major. I didn't think it was made sense. People have different uh, things that they like. We go in the home at that time even more strongly and say, what would you like to major in? And we allowed kids to choose any major. After our second year, I think the rest of that time, the kids that we recruited, we had one guy to major in African American studies. Uh, because I didn't like the clustering, and yes, they made very good grades. But I want our guys to be able to choose what they wanted to choose. And uh, I thought we did a great job, and our kids did a great job. And uh, somebody said, how can I say something that I said at another press conference? When I, It's all the same answer. We let kids choose what they want to choose. If you ask Marcus Page, what did I tell him to major in, he'll say I didn't. And that's the way we tried to do it. So we thought we were doing the right thing, felt very comfortable about it. Uh, our kids have, uh, that were in the AFAM, I uh, think our kids tried to do the right thing. Uh, I think the kids tried to do the work that they were assigned. I'm dumbfounded by everything that came out in the, in the uh, report this week. I know we had another discussion, and uh, I told them I'd rather have my guys in a regular classroom sitting setting, better English, I guess, uh, instead of uh, independent study. When I was here those first couple of years, independent study meant independent study, and that was not a stigma. And then when it came out, the first time I'd ever heard the term paper classes was uh, in the last couple of years. It's the first time I'd ever heard that terminology and the first time I ever even, I'd asked somebody, are they talking about independent studies? But independent studies was not a stigma at that time. Uh, but things that have happened uh, for a long time is very uh, disappointing. We're all really extremely sad about it. Uh, we've made a lot of moves. Uh, a lot of uh, procedures have been put in place. A lot of people have lost their jobs. And uh, I'll always be sad about uh, uh, the image that we have right now around the country. We've had one of the greatest images we can possibly have. And we're going to work as hard as we can possibly work to have that image be back to where it was. And I'm very proud to be part of that that's going to try to make 
the University of North Carolina have that image again. Take a couple of questions if you have any. Roy, are you at all concerned that, that maybe once the NCAA weighs in that any wins will be taken away, the banners will come down? Uh, you know, who knows? Am I concerned? I'm concerned about am I going to get up tomorrow. I'm concerned my wife's had two surgeries in the last five weeks, one of them a five-hour surgery. Between uh, the last 16th month, excuse me, 16 months from June 6th of 2013 to right now, if this were my first 16 months of coaching, you wouldn't see a 17th month. It's been a pain in the rear end. Uh, but I believe in this university. I, nobody knows what's going to happen in the NCAA, but I feel strongly, strongly that uh, we did things the right way. One of the things when I got here that was different from Kansas, we were the uh, academic uh, system was not involved in the Department of Athletics. At Kansas, we were in the same building. I used to walk in every day and see all those people. Uh, but I'm proud, and I'm proud of the, uh, the fact that we tried to get kids to major in what they wanted to do. I'm proud of the things that we've done academically. Uh, I didn't like everything that was in the report. There's no question I would probably disagree with some of those things, but the thing about it is is that we tried to do the right thing so uh, I can't determine uh, what the NCAA is going to do they've got to do what they want to do I personally don't see anything there in men's basketball that uh, uh, that somebody can immediately look at and say this is going to happen or this is not going to happen so they've got to make those decisions well, it seems like the Weinstein report said that one of the reasons that athletes were steered towards these classes was to maintain their eligibility. If, if it's proven that there's a men's basketball player who maybe maintained his eligibility through this paper class system, what, what do you think the proper punishment should be? I have no idea about that. It's uh, Again, I'm trying to figure out how to box out better. I'm trying to figure out how to do better from here on out. I felt very comfortable with what we did academically, and I'm going to try to emphasize it even more and try to do a better job here. But playing those speculative games, and it's a little bit of an answer there. I have no idea, but um, there just hasn't been a day in my life that I haven't been extremely concerned about doing the things the right way academically. I may try to beat your butt with a little smack talk or something on the golf course, but there's not been a day in my life that I haven't tried to do the right thing academically and get my kids to be concerned about the academic side. Well, in hindsight, do you wish that maybe you would have noticed things or did anything differently years ago and you noticed the clustering? Or I did notice that, and we changed it. Uh, you know, I, guys, I think that I would have been run off if I tried to go in any department in the university and tell them to try to how to run it. That's not my job. I took care of my guys. and. If there's something that the coach doesn't like, you should try to do the right thing. I think I tried to do the right thing. Uh, I've never known a, uh, a coach to try to uh, say what should happen. I, in reading the report, there was one thing in there that struck me as, you know, academic freedom means professors can run their show. I've never had a professor. Now, there's probably some of them sitting up the stands that would like to, but I've never had a professor tell me whether to play manners on. I wouldn't take that very calmly. And uh, I graduate from here. I didn't take any independent study courses. Uh, proud of my degree. I got a master's degree. I'm proud of that degree. And uh, again, we can all look back and say, oh, I wish I'd have done this. I wish I'd done it. Guys, I didn't know anything of what has been shown until three or four years ago. Three or four years ago. I mean, I wanted the guys out of there because everybody's clustering the same thing. That Some of you are old enough, you may have seen those football games. Where they said Roy Williams again. I'm I'm, I'm gonna go journalism. <laughs> you guys, you're major journalism. Next guy, journalism. I think journalism is pretty easy, and it's not right because people. I don't have that same interest. My interest is a lot different from you guys. But uh, you know, we can all look back and say we wish we'd have done this or wish we'd done that. But I've never known a basketball coach to be in charge of the entire university. Okay. Um, you. Um, you live, Aaron. Uh, Wayne Walden in the report specifically says it says that he had some knowledge, I guess, of some of the irregularities. Uh, did he ever convey that to you? And are you satisfied with basically the job he did in light of what the report says? Remember, I said a few minutes ago, everything in the report I don't necessarily agree with. Okay, and they did a, 
unbelievably hard job of trying to talk to so many people. Wayne Wallen's one of the most ethical guys I've ever known in my life. When you read that, does it say that he under, knew it on March 1st, 2004? Did it say that he uh, knew somebody was grading it by themselves? You know, it's, there's a lot of questions there that uh, Wayne and I have already had some discussions. Uh, I trust him from the bottom of my soul. And he's going to look back and say he wishes he had done some things differently. I wish I'd have been chancellor for a day. Maybe I would have solved all the problems of the world. But you can't do that. But no, Wayne Walden, uh, there's never been anybody more ethical than Wayne Walden. Luke? I was going to ask about Walden. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Paul, you yeah. hang on, yeah, just Paul. Real quick, how, what's your kind of philosophy? How involved do you think that you know, coaches and coaching staff should be with student athletes, just in far as far as academics goes? I mean, how involved do you guys feel they should be in that? I like the position that we have. I'm supposed to encourage academics. I'm supposed to give them time. I'm supposed to emphasize it. I've, every team I've ever coached, I've had players wave at me as they're leaving practice to go to study sessions. Not just to take a test, but to go to study sessions. I've changed practice times to allow them to go to study sessions, not just to take a test. I think that we should emphasize it and make sure that there's never any doubt of what's important. Uh, you know, the, it was said in that report too that uh, Roy Williams said your job is to keep your guys eligible. That meeting never took place. Never took place. I've never had that kind of meeting, and I've never said anything like that. And we can't find the interview that it was said in. And we have looked, because that insulted my integrity. And I've never had that kind of meeting. I would never make that kind of statement. That didn't happen. And again, we can't find out where it was ever said. And we've looked. Uh, but uh, I want to coach. Think about this. What would you want to coach to do if it was your son or your daughter? You'd want a guy to make sure that he understands that the degree has got to be the most important because the basketball is going to stop bouncing. you got to have something. I'll throw this out to you. I gave to my team. 56% of the guys drafted in the NBA four years ago are out of the NBA right now. 56%. Seven first-rounders. So I emphasize that kind of thing to my guys all the time. Uh, I would like a coach that would allow my son to uh, spend the time to get prepared for a test. I have that you, if you need a tutor 10 hours a day, seven days a week, we'll get you one. But every prospect I've said, I've been in the home in 20, this is my 27th year, so I guess 27 years. Every prospect I've ever been, I said, we will provide you with all the help you need, but you've got to do the work. Every, every home, 27 years. And so that's the way I think a coach should. I've never chosen a class in my entire life. I've never chosen a professor for a class in my entire life. When I look at the schedule, I say, okay, these guys have got that. Do a good job. And I've never chosen a course or anything. So I would like that kind of coach. Okay, Somebody else? Um, when, your, when the report first came out, what was the team's reaction? What did you say to them you know, to kind of keep them focused? You know, we stuff? tried to give them some heads up that it's going to come out. I was on the road recruiting. I didn't want to be here. Not that I don't like you guys, but you didn't need to see me. I was working my butt off. And it was my daughter's birthday. So I went to Charlotte and had a birthday dinner with my daughter. Um, I didn't think it was going to be good. You know, I'm not naive. Uh, but we talked to the team about, we'll give you all the information. And I met with the team again yesterday after practice. Said, okay, does anybody have any questions about what's going on? And, you know, half these guys, you know, were in grammar school. Uh, when the stuff went on, when most of the stuff went on. And somebody said, well, Roy Williams was responsible. You know, in 92, I wasn't even here. You know, but I'm very proud of the way we've acted and the way we handle stuff. Did you, uh, did you feel any sense of vindication when uh, Weinstein uh, said that, that there was no evidence to, to prove that uh, Rashad McCance's statements on national television were, were accurate? I don't know if I'd say the vindication. I know the truth. And the truth is that that didn't happen either. I don't know what swap means. And I never had that kind of question, never had that kind of uh, meeting with the player.